Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland from Graphic in Motion. In this episode I want to give you a quick introduction to Vellum Fluids. We will take a look how we can set up Vellum Fluids in subcontext. Then I want to show you how to set up a Vellum Fluid simulation in the DOF context, so in the dynamic operator context. And finally, I will quickly go over a setup using the shelf tools. I also want to show you the most important attributes that we can change to control the behavior of Vellum Fluid simulations. So let's jump right into Houdini and let's get started. This time, we will create our scene a little bit different. So instead of going in here and creating a geometry node ourselves, we will use the Houdini help. Let's go to the Houdini help and go to contents. And then in the search field, type in Vellum Fluids. Houdini has some user guides for some different scenarios. And these are really good. You see here we have the Vellum Fluid setup and you also have a user guide for vellum fluid and soft bodies and you also have vellum fluids versus flip fluid so if you are interested in which cases vellum fluids make sense and in which cases flip fluids make sense then you should check this out it's quite interesting but now let's take a look at the vellum fluid setups because this is what we are going to do so here you can now read everything that I will tell you and probably a little bit more if you are into reading and if you like that kind of learning, then you can do that. But I will go through all of this. But what I really want to grab here is the scene setup. You see that there is a scene and if we click load, then this will be loaded directly into Houdini. And that's actually cool. And in some cases, uh, this is possible. So if you use the Houdini help and if you go through these user guides, there is often already a scene or also an example scene that you can then load and that you can use. And that's what we want to do. So let's turn this off or let's close it and let's take a look what we have. So we have this geometry node here and inside this geometry we have two other geometry nodes. We have a source node. We cannot really see it now. It's just a sphere and we have this glass here. And because I do not want to work inside this subfolder here, I will just grab these two, copy them, go up one level and paste them in here. And then I can delete that because this is the structure that I would usually use. So I would start creating my objects right here in the object context. And this makes a little bit more sense for me. Okay, now let's get started and let's set up a fluid simulation inside the subs context. So let's create a geometry node and call it vellum fluids and sops. Before I dive in there, I want to make sure that my source geometries have null objects that I can link to. So let's go into the source object, drop in a null here and call this my source. And then I will do the same here in the class and I will take also a null and call it my class, like so. Now we go to the Vellum Fluid sub and we will set up a simulation. Therefore, we will use two object merge nodes to bring in our source, first of all. So this is my source geometry and this will be my glass. So let's link this to the glass null. We can rename this, this is my source. This is my glass. To turn an object into fluids, you can use the vellum configure fluid node. So vellum configure fluid. And if you link this up and if you take a look at this node, then this will be already familiar if you already did the other parts of my vellum playground course, especially the grain parts. Because this is actually, as you can read here, nothing else than a vellum config grain node that is set up to fluids. The settings for fluids are a little bit different. You see we have this type here that is set to fluids. We have the packing density that is a little bit higher to 1.5 in grains. It is one by default. And in the physical attributes, we have the mass set to calculate uniform. This will give us the density value. And this density value is also important for fluids. A density value of 1000 means the density of water. If you change this to set uniform, this is the standard setting in grains, you do not have access to this density. So this is important for vellum fluids. The other thing that is important is the viscosity and the surface tension. 
but we'll get to this a little bit later. Now let's take a look how we can set up a basic fluid simulation. First of all, you see that the resolution, of course, is not good enough, so we have to decrease the particle size here. Let's set it to 0.01 for now. Then we need a vellum solver, of course. So let's add in a vellum solver and let's link it up with our config and grains node. And in the solver, we also have to do some changes to make fluid simulations work. First of all, we need more substeps. The vellum help says it needs at least five substeps, but it recommends to use 10 substeps. So let's use 10 substeps for now, but therefore we can change or decrease the constraints iterations. I will set this to 10. You could also set it to 20. And you can turn off the smoothing iterations because these have no influence on fluid simulations. That's all that we have to change. Now we already have a basic fluid simulation. And if we just link our glass to the collisions tab, to the collision stream, then we can already run our simulation. But let me quickly turn off the visualization here of my collision because it is a bit disturbing. And now let's take a look what's happening here. With this basic setup, our sphere will just be turned into a blob or a drop of fluid that will drop down and collide with the surface of our glass. And you can see here that it already creates these fluid-like structures. So these little bit tendrils here and small drops here. So you see that without changing any settings, we already have something that behaves a little bit like water. So this is how you set up a very basic simulation inside SOPS. Now let's take a look how we can do the same thing inside a DOP network. So let's go out here and let's just duplicate this here, this geometry node. And let me actually rewind to frame one, otherwise it is calculating in the background. And I will just call this DOPS. So we'll just quickly go over a DOP network setup. And I just can delete my vellum solver here and everything else here stays the same. So to set up a fluid simulation inside a DOP network is actually exactly the same as setting up a grain simulation inside a DOP network. We just apply a null in here to the geometry stream and one null to the constraint stream. And we rename these to geo and constraints. Now we add in a DOP network and dive inside. Now to set up a dot network, you're already familiar with that. We need our vellum object node. We need our vellum source node. So that's exactly the same as in every other vellum simulation. We need a vellum solver. We need a static object if we want to have some collisions. And of course we need a gravity if we want to drive our simulation with gravity. You can also do it with other forces. So let's link this up. Let's put our vellum object in the first input of our vellum solver, vellum source into the third input. Let's grab these two nodes, hold on Alt and merge them together, bring this into our gravity and then connect everything to the output. We can press L to lay this out a bit nicer. And this is how we set up a normal vellum dot network. Now we link up our sources. So the sub path goes to our Import here, well, let me quickly see where I am. I'm here to the geometry null. And then this one here goes to our constraint null. And that's it. I think now I made a mistake maybe. I think I linked up both of them. No, it's fine. Okay, now I only have to link up my glass and let me also bring in a null here and call this my collider. And I actually can cut this connection to our vellum fluid node here. And now here in the static object, I also have to connect this one here to my collision geometry. Okay. And again, I don't want to see that. So let's go in here in the static object and just turn off display and let's activate our dot network. And now you see it is visible again. And this has to do with this object here. So now it shows my static object and the vellum object. This is a little bit cut off on the screen recording. Sorry for that. But now if you choose only the vellum object and if you delete this star here, then only the grains will be visible or the fluids in this case. 
So now we can run our simulation and it will be pretty similar. Um, you see it's very fast now because I didn't set up the solver correctly and you also see it doesn't look like fluid. So this is what it looks like if you don't set up the solver correctly. So let's go into the solver. Let's increase the substeps to 10. Let's decrease the constraint iterations to 10. Oops, sorry, to 10. And let's set the smoothing iterations to zero. And now this should look something like before. Our fluid is dropping into our class and it should now also behave like a fluid. And you can see that it does. So it's pretty similar than our SOP version here. It creates very nice splashes already. So this is how you can set up a fluid simulation inside DOPS. Now, let me quickly save this scene and then I will show you how you can use the shelf tools. I saved this scene now because to show you how to use the shelf tools, I have to delete these two uh, nodes because otherwise Houdini gets a little bit confused when I create another DOPS network. Uh, if you use the shelf tools, then it will automatically use a top network setup. So let's open up the shelf tools and I will position myself. So let's position this better and let me reposition myself here a little bit better. And let's take a look at the vellum shelf tools right here. And you will see there is actually no fluid shelf tool, but you can use the vellum grains shelf tool to create fluids. So if you do not want to manually create the dot network, as I showed you now with all these node creations and, and connections, then you can use this here. So to do that, just select, deselect everything, click Vellum Grains, and now you see it says, select an object for Vellum Grains, we want to select our source object. Now press Enter to accept the selection. And that's it. So what happened now? This is very similar than other shelf tool setups that I showed you before during our course. Houdini, if we go up one level now to our object level, created a few nodes for us. So first of all, it created the AutoDOP network, so a DOP network. It created this vellum grains here. This is again this setup where it imports the data from the DOP network, runs it through yeah, a vellum IO and some visualize things and the vellum post process. So this is what you should render then in the end. And inside our source geo, it created, let me quickly press L here, it created these grain constraints and these nulls. So this source null is actually the one that I created before. So yeah, I could now delete this because it is a little bit confusing. So this is how it should look like. Now, actually we are using a grain setup now because we use the grain shelf tool. But to turn a grain setup into fluid setup, you only have to go to the vellum configure grain node here, change this from grain to fluid, and then we have to put in the same values that I showed you before. So packing density to 1.5, and in the physical attributes, we just change the mass to calculate uniform. We can activate viscosity and surface tension if we want to change it, and that's all you have to do. If we now lower the resolution and activate this, we actually have the same thing as before. I think that I also enabled the cheetah scale, and that's it. Now let's go to the top network. Here we also have to do some changes. It is already set up to five substeps because of the vellum grain setting, but for fluids, sometimes you need more. So let's set this to 10, to 10 on the constraint iterations and to zero on our smoothing iterations. And that's it. Now we should have exactly the same behavior, but we have no static object in here now. So to add in our class, we could do that manually, as we showed you before, by creating a static object. But again, you can also use the shelf tools. So let's do this in our case. Let's select our glass geometry node right here in the object context and click Surface Collider. So by doing that and going into our Autodop network and pressing L to lay this out, you see our glass object is now added to our static object solver or to our static object, and then the static solver is applied here. That's actually not necessary in this case, but the shelf tool creates it. Yeah, and now everything should work. So now let's also turn off display geometry. Let's go up one level, and we can actually activate this one here because this will show everything. Let's turn off the glass geo, 
and now let's run the simulation and it should be very similar to our top network that I created before. As you can see here, it is now creating exactly the same simulation as we had it before in our manually created top network. Good, so these are the three options that you have when you want to create these setups. Now let's take a look how we can manipulate and art direct these simulations by changing some important attributes. But for that, I will go back to the setup that I created manually. Okay, now I'm back in my setup that I created before. You see we have the Vellum Fluid Sobs and we have the Vellum Fluid Dops here. I will just use the Vellum Fluid Sobs for now, so let's go into this. But it actually works exactly the same in the other ones as well. So if you want to change the behavior of your fluid, the most important values are definitely the viscosity and the surface tension. Exactly as in grains, you have these two multiplier values here on your vellum configure fluid node. And these will just multiply whatever value you specify here in the advanced tab on the fluids on the solver. So if you change the solver settings here, then this will have an influence on all fluid sources that you simulate. If you change it on the configure fluid node directly, then you can create different sources and solve these with one solver. I will show you an example about fluid mixing, fluids that have different attributes in another Patreon tutorial in a few weeks. So now let's take a look what these really do. So first of all, the viscosity. If we increase the viscosity to a very high value, then you get something like honey or maybe like uh, chocolate that is melting or something that is very sticky. So it's definitely not water anymore. And if we activate this now, uh, you see that it is now dropping down and it is more like a blob. It will not create splashes now. There will not be these nice tendrils. This is really if you just drop a very sticky fluid into a glass, as you can see here. And if we make this even higher, so if you want to make it go really crazy here, let's take a look what this does. At some point, viscosity could break uh, the more viscous fluid you want to simulate, the more substeps you need. So if we would simulate a viscosity of 1000 with five substeps, we could get some problems. But now you see this really now looks like maybe something like a honey that you drip into a glass because it's, it's not even splashing out anymore. So this is a very viscous fluid, a bit unrealistic in this case. Let's take a look at the surface tension. Surface tension is pretty cool, especially if you're creating splashes because the surface tension controls how, yeah, how much these fluid particles want to stick together and how they form these tendrils and these droplets. So the higher the surface tension is, the more tendrils and droplets we get. Let's set this to 25 now and let's run the simulation. And you will see now the splash will look totally different. So now we will get bigger droplets, we will get more tendrils, and you can see already here, it starts to form them. The particles try to, to stick together way more. And that's a pretty cool setting when you want to create splashes and you want to art direct the splashes. And of course, you can combine viscosity and surface tension and create all kinds of fluids. And let's take a look at that. I think that this is quite a nice result. So you see here the tendrils, this is the surface tension. Let me go a little bit more extreme. Let's set it to 100 and let's run the simulation again. And this will be now even more extreme and these will create even bigger drops and even bigger tendrils, as you will see in a moment. Now they try to stick together even more. Yeah, we get a look like this. So surface tension is pretty cool to add direct splashes. So this could be something like uh, an advertisement for coffee where the milk drops in the coffee and it creates these really smooth and nice and very unnatural uh, crown splashes here. This is where surface tension comes in really handy. 
Okay, so these are the two most important settings, how you can control the look of your fluid. But now let's take a look how you can actually emit fluid, because now we are only turning a blob of geometry or a geometry into a blob of fluid. But what if we want to fill our glass actually with fluid? You can do this in SOPs and you can also do this in DOPs. In SOPs it works like this. We need a vellum source object, the one that we also use in the DOP setup, but we have to use it inside the vellum solver. So let's rewind this quickly. Let's go into the vellum solver, dive in there, and let's add in a vellum source node. This is exactly the same node that we know from the DOP network setup, and we connect this to the source output. I actually did not know that this works uh, until I studied the fluids, and then, yeah, it, it came up that you can actually use this also in a sub solver. That's pretty cool. But of course, you have now, you have to set this up as we did in the DOP network. So we can just cut these two connections and bring in null objects here and call this our GeoStream. Let me make a little bit more room here and create another one, connect this to our constraint stream and call this constraints. And now you have to do the same as in the DOP network setup. You go to the source and just link these up here. So we are in here and we want to have the geo stream first of all, and then we want to have the constraint stream. Now, instead of choosing emit only once, we can change this to each substep or each frame, depending what you want. And now it will just emit fluid particles each frame or each substeps, and this way you will get a stream of fluid and you can fill up something or you can just create a river or whatever. So you see how this looks now. Of course it's a little bit slower because we are emitting a lot of fluid particles each substep. That means 10 times per frame because I set the substeps to 10. And you see it is really slow and not really good for tutorial purpose. So let me quickly change this so that we get a bit of a better behavior or a faster simulation, I should say, because the behavior is probably not that realistic anymore. I will just change this to five substeps now, increase this to 20, and I will go to my vellum fluid and just change the resolution a tiny bit, make it a bit bigger, and then this simulation should work a little bit faster. Yeah, you see now it simulates a bit quicker and we can take a look what this is doing. It is now just filling up our class with a stream of water. And you can also see that this emitter type is not really good. And one problem we have is that these grain or these fluid particles are created on the same spot each frame, which leads to a bit of an unnatural emission. And we can change this pretty quickly. So let's go back here and just run the simulation as you can see here now it is just filling up our class and to make this maybe a bit more interesting or a bit more realistic you can go to the vellum fluid node and you could just change the seed each frame so now we could put in uh, like dollar frame this little expression and if we activate this now and just take a look at the position of these particles you see they change now each frame and this will give it a bit of variation if you want to create realistic emitters then i would maybe also add in a mountain node and distort this a little bit or something like that. But just with this quick expression here, dollar $f in the seed, you will randomize the emission a little bit. So let's take a quick look at that. The difference will not be that obvious, but it will be a little bit more natural. Generally, as you can see here, I would not recommend to just use a sphere emitter if you want to create a stream of water. There are definitely better options, but we will take a look at that also in an upcoming tutorial on Patreon. So that's just what I wanted to show you how you can emit fluids in Vellum. Now, let me show you the same thing quickly in the DOP network, but it's really the same. It, there is no difference. You just go in here, but here it's even even simpler, you go to the DOP network and just change the setting in the vellum source here from only once to emit each substeps, and then you're good to go. And you will emit fluids into your DOP network setup. Okay, so this is it with the basic introduction to vellum fluids. If you want to learn more about vellum fluids, then I would recommend that you check out my Patreon. 
there I will release two more fluid related tutorials. We will take a look how we can mix two different fluids, so fluids with different viscosity and different surface tension attributes. I will also show you how to mesh these fluids and how to render them. And then we will take a look at a project where we use cloth simulation together with the fluid simulation to create nice splashes and how you can combine vellum cloth simulations or soft body simulations and fluid simulations in vellum. So I thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.